In this section we are going to see unit step response of a first order system. A generic first order system transfer function is given by 1 over 1 plus st. And if you see the highest degree of s in either numerator or denominator is 1. So that's why we call it a first order system. If we take r of s as the reference input and the system's controlled output is c of s and its corresponding time functions are r of t and c of t as we have started with the assumption input is unit step so r of t will be like this it will be 1 when t is greater than 0 and it will be 0 when t is less than 0 now given this input to this system our intention is to find what is c of t so in order to find that first of all let's find what is c of s which will be easy to find is r of s times the transfer function now r of s for a unit step is 1 over s times the transfer function which is 1 over 1 plus st to find inverse Laplace transform first of all we need to find partial fractions of this function so I'm going to take a as a constant or s plus b another constant or 1 plus st we can find by using partial fraction methods that a is given by limit s tends to 0 s times c of s this can be written as limit s tends to 0 1 over 1 plus st which will be 1 now similarly if you find for the value of b limit s tends to minus 1 over t because the root of the second term denominator is minus 1 by t times 1 plus st times c of s if you find this value which will be s tends to minus 1 over t times 1 by s will have minus capital T now having known the constants a and b if you rewrite c of s it will be 1 over s plus minus t over 1 plus st we can rewrite this further by taking t common from numerator and denominator we get 1 over s plus minus 1 over s plus 1 over t if you take the inverse Laplace transform for this function inverse Laplace of 1 by s is u of t and inverse Laplace transform of this term second term is minus e power minus t over capital T times u of t now if I can write it here c of t can be written as 1 minus e power minus t over capital T times u of t u of t here signifies that the output is valid for t greater than 0 I'm rewriting it for convenience sake that I'll take this plus and I have a minus in here if you see this has now two terms one is a constant 1 times u of t and the second term a negative exponential with a negative sign outside times u of t the second term so if you see the plots of these two functions the first one is 1 times u of t which looks exactly same as the input by the way and the second function which is minus e power minus t by capital T at t equals to 0 the value of the second function will be minus 1 and as t increases tending to infinity this term second term tends to be 0 as t increases this function goes and tries to reach 0 value if you see these two functions 1 and 2 you can see the first one doesn't change at all it's it's almost constant so we can say this is like a steady state response of the system whereas the second one is actually doing the transition it is changing over time we call this the transient response of the system so the total response of the system would be the addition of steady state and transient response and that's exactly what is represented here for a total response so if you plot the response the added response of both transient and steady state it'll look like this it is trying to catch up to the final value by increasing exponentially so the reference that it is trying to catch up is one which is exactly the input that we have applied now to further go into details of this function I'm actually going to take the differentiation of C of t which will be differentiation of 1 is 0 and differentiation of the second term I'll have minus e power minus t by capital T times 1 over t minus and of course we'll have u of t so if I can rewrite this we have 1 over t times e power minus t by capital T times u of t 
I'll be interested more in finding the slope of the function at t equals to 0. We'll see in a minute why. It will be exactly 1 over t. What it means is, at t equals to 0, the slope of this function is 1 over t positive. Hypothetically, if we assume that the function tries to keep up the same slope and increase to catch up the final value, it would have done it in a time capital T itself. But it takes longer than that, by the way. But now the question is, how much it would have reached by the time the T is capital T for the actual response? So if we take it, this will be the question mark. What will be this value? So if I take T and the output response for that time value and see if T is capital T, C of T would have reached 0 0.632. I've used a calculator to get these values. So at capital T, the output would have reached 63.2% of its final value. At 2T, it'll reach 86.5% of its final value. 3T, it'll reach 95%. And 4T, it'll reach 98.2%. So instead of every time telling how much time does it take to actually reach 98% or 95% or terms like that, we can simply mention it takes four time constants to reach 98 and three time constants to reach 95. And capital T, the time constant itself, is a, will be depending on the system parameters. You can see if capital T is small, which means it takes a smaller time to actually reach the 98%. Percentage. If capital T is larger, then the system would take a pretty long time to reach the same 98%, which means for a system to be really fast, we need the capital T to be as small as possible. If the capital T is larger, the output function would look something like this. It will slowly go and reach the final value after a very long time. We can say when T is large, the output will be sluggish which is like being lazy. It reaches the final value after quite a bit of time. So to have a faster response for a first order system, we need to have the time constant to be as small as possible. So capital T is a very important parameter for the first order system. It's called the time constant. The time that it takes to reach 63.2% is called the time constant.